Paula's Choice, the brand that was largely responsible for introducing many people to the world of skincare. One of the brands that truly pioneered consumer education and helped a lot in bringing science to the forefront of cosmetics. Credit where it's due, Paula's Choice has been an iconic brand for years. I would argue in the past, now, maybe not so much, and this video will discuss why. Put simply and frankly, and only in my opinion, of course, their marketing has become a joke. And in many ways, it's an insult to the legacy of Paula herself, but even the brand overall. Like this is the cosmetics cop. This was the brand that went after other brands, it exposed marketing lies. And here we found ourselves with Paula's Choice being one of the biggest proponents of some of the most egregious marketing like bullshit there is. They have become the type of brand that the original Paula's Choice would go after. The downward trajectory of Paula's Choice actually started a little while ago. It seemed like the brand started to release products that maybe previously in Paula's reviews, they would have negative you know, marks or negative scores. And they even started to release products that they used to claim were a waste of money. You know, this part is forgivable. It's fine. It's whatever. A business evolves. People evolve. Opinions evolve that's what you want you don't necessarily want everyone to hold the same opinion they had 30 years ago today and of course new ingredients come out and that also influences products options trends and all that sort of stuff and so the scope of what is available what consumers want changes and I totally understand brands wanting to move with that it's just odd that when there's a financial component to an opinion that's when things become okay and all of a sudden these reviews these recommendations change but putting that aside and considering a more recent history, I would say, and this is something that Bonnie Garner from Beauty Alley mentioned to me in DMs, is that maybe when they started to explore partnerships with big retailers like Sephora, that's when things really started to veer off course. In my opinion, their claims started to become super exaggerated, but even the price points, it's almost like a disconnect occurred from what the original DNA of the brand was. So I've just got a few key dot points and key examples that are all, that I want to run through that I feel like really showcases how Paula's Choice has lost the plot. So number one, pricing. To start off with something more obvious, price points. This is something that has impacted most brands. It's not like isolated to Paula's Choice. But I feel like Paula's Choice was always a relatively accessible brand. They were kind of positioned as the, they were kind of positioned as the Robin Hood of the skincare world. But then all of a sudden they're releasing $59 peptide boosters, which only come in like 20 mil bottles of product. And that's not even this like typical standard 30 mils that you'd expect in a serum. And more recently they've got $68 retinoid serums. Like that's more than different more than like a that's more than actual drug product to me this price point is way beyond where Paula's Choice would or should sit in the market and I feel like it's beyond what they initially promised I can't even see how the existing Paula's Choice customer base would be happy with where these price points are going I mean luckily they do run fairly regular sales on their website so I'm sure part of this is to accommodate how often they're on sale but still you kind of have to know where you do sit in the market and if you're kind of approaching luxury territory then I think they're probably in a fortunate position because they have several kind of cult favorite, long-standing, iconic products. And that probably does carry the brand still and is a good entry point into Paula's Choice. But a lot of these extra products that they're releasing out and especially the pricing that's, that's coming along with them just doesn't make sense to me. Moving on to the second point, which is comparing acids to water. This is something that came up in one of their marketing emails and it doesn't, I guess, personally bother me too much just because I think the fear around acids has been exaggerated on social media anyway. But comparing an exfoliating acid to water is actually a pretty grand statement. The implication is that it's gentle enough to use every day, throw it on whenever in the same way you would use water. But is a brand actually able to say that an acid is as gentle as water? Should they even be saying that? That's odd, right? Does that actually mean that it's not doing anything? Is it buffered to a point that it's not working at all? So, so yeah, to me, this was super confusing messaging. This, again, this was a brand that lived in education. So why not communicate to customers with a bit more nuance? So 
you know, I think we can understand what gentle means without encouraging using an acid the same way that you would water. Number three is comparing their products to prescriptions. There are two issues here. One issue is a little bit more mild where they're essentially saying their product is as close as you can get to a prescription. And you know, that type of marketing is probably on the verge of being fine. A lot of brands do it. I think most of us understand the retinoid pathway to a point. Although the problem here is that the retinoid pathway is a theoretical action. But the truth is that a cosmetic ingredient hasn't been vetted in the same way that a drug treatment has. And even if we assume that the ingredient itself is as close as you can get to prescription, it doesn't mean that the Paula's Choice product is as close as you can get to prescription. A lot of things influence how a finished product will work, not the ingredient by itself. So this claim at best, so this claim at best is just super exaggerated and they simply would never have the evidence to show this. But beyond this vague marketing, on Space NK, which is one of the UK's largest beauty retailers, they've actually straight up lied. For their new retinoid product in the description, they claim that their product cont contains adapalene. Adapalene is a drug treatment and their product absolutely does not contain adapalene. So this is just a straight up lie. Instead, they use a cosmetic derivative called adapanoid, but these things work very differently and, and there's no sense of proper comparison between adapanoid and adapalene. I'm fairly sure this claim is illegal. I can't see how it wouldn't be considered false advertising. And I would hope it's more just a mistake of some miscommunication between Space and K and Paula's Choice. But as I'm filming this, the terminology of adapalene is still on the product page and that is an absolute fabrication lie deceptive advertising. Number four, and this is the one that actually propelled the video because it actually really pissed me off. It's that they're telling customers to ditch their own prescriptions. I can't fathom any brand in the world, let alone Paula's Choice, telling people to stop using their prescriptions. Prescriptions are medications, like that's insane. If you have a prescription, it's because probably a doctor has actually given it to you based on a real skin condition that cosmetics aren't even designed to address. Paula's Choice is selling a cosmetic retinoid that has absolutely no clinical standing within the context of a medical situation. It is entirely irrelevant. The Paula's Choice product is not recognized as a treatment for anything, but neither are any of the ingredients. Not to mention the fact that in Australia and the US, the real adapalene, like the actual drug treatment, is available over the counter. So Paula's Choice is charging far more for a derivative serum when you can actually just buy the real thing for far less. To me, telling people to ditch their prescription is tantamount to offering medical advice. So not only is this absolutely loopy, I can't even envision how it would be ethical. And the last point I'll make, number five, is that they still offer like an ingredient scanning app and like an ingredient dictionary. How to, on what planet does it make sense for a skincare brand to offer their biased opinions as if it's unbiased information? Of course, they're going to slant these things to their own perception or their own, their own ability to evaluate the facts. Why do I care how Paula's Choice interprets something? Why would you? They're, these things exist as marketing tools for the brand. In many ways, this is essentially how clean beauty operates. Creating concern over a subset of ingredients like Paula's Choice loves to hate on fragrance, alcohol, those sorts of things. Whereas when properly designed, they're totally fine. And Paula's Choice hardly ever discusses the nuance of regulations and dose. If we go by Paula's Choice logic, their products would therefore be flawless and never cause problems for anyone. But you can look it up yourself. You will see that even their products cause issues. Some people hate the application. Some people break out from them. Some people, for some people, it triggers their rosacea and redness, all sorts of things. That's because you cannot judge ingredients in isolation. The dose, the formula, the delivery, all of that matters. And none of this is, and none of this context is given within any of Paula's choice ingredient scanning apps or ingredient dictionaries. So it's all crap. Overall, I just wanted to make this video because Paula's choice is a brand that trades on its legacy. And I feel like it has a bit of a protective halo around it because of its history. But please keep in mind, they are now a Unilever brand. They're not some small struggling indie brand that needs your protection. 
They have tons of money behind them, tons of marketing budget. They would have all of the regulatory information they need in front of them. That means they're choosing to be this shady. I feel we need to hold them to the standard of all corporate brands. Personally speaking, if I'm looking at a small brand, I'm not going to like assume that they tick every box all the time. Brands stretch the truth a little bit. You know, ultimately it is difficult to find a place in the market. So finding a point of difference can be challenging. But Paula's Choice has been around for ages. They are a corporate brand. There is no excuse. They're probably just doing this because they can't actually come up with formulas that stand tall by themselves. We're at the point now where Paula's Choice, a cosmetic brand, is informing consumers to stop using their medications that's a problem. Anyway, this video was just a bit of food for thought and of course all of all my opinions. Let me know in the comments if you agree, disagree. I don't see how you would disagree because Paula's Choice just sucks now and I think we have to face the fact. But look, of course I'm not saying don't use the brand. Everybody's free to make their own decisions. But if you're maybe choosing between two brands, I'd, especially if it's a smaller brand, I don't understand why you would still support corporate Unilever, Paula's Choice, when they've just become the absolute gutter of marketing.